Good evening, everybody. Let's stand and worship together.
Today is uh, communion weekend, and so I'm going to ask the servers to please go to your stations right now. And uh, just a word of encouragement for any of you that aren't used to what we do here. We believe that communion is for the family of God, and so if you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are welcome to come and partake of communion with us. And uh, it is for the whole family of God, not just the vineyard, can you view vineyard family of God. And so what you'll do is the ushers will help you, and you go out the left, you come forward and get the bread in the cup, and go back to your seats, and then we will take communion together. So as we're coming forward, going back to get the elements, we'll continue in a spirit of worship and continue to worship.
sing, I'm not afraid. no greater demonstration of the glory of God than what he revealed through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what we celebrate. And the, the communion service actually came from the Passover meal in the book of Exodus. And God ordained that the people would eat unleavened bread. And unleavened obviously means that there's no yeast in the bread, and so there's no life in it. And so as we take of the bread, it's a picture of of Jesus' body that died for us, that he became the sacrifice for our sins. So let's take of this unleavened bread in thankfulness for what God has done for us. Thank you, Lord. And then the cup of the juice I got to swallow before I start talking again. It has life in it. it. It has yeast, it has sugar, and, and if we would leave this out on the cupboard for a few days, it would ferment because of the life in it. And so this is actually a picture of life being in the blood, as Moses prescribes in the Old Testament in Mosaic Law. And so the blood that Jesus shed for us is the life that was poured out so that he could become the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so his blood washes away all of our sins. And so as we take of this, let's drink it in thankfulness, in amazement, and in awe of what Jesus sacrificed for us. Let's take of the cup. And before you pass the containers, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you came. We thank you that you revealed your heart to us. We thank you, Lord, that you became man and that you freely gave your life for us. And so, Lord, as we take of the bread and we take of the cup, Lord, I pray that our lives would be poured out for you and that we would be your offering, Lord, that we would offer to you and that we would take this great message to the streets 
as you've called us to, and as we will examine today in Romans 10. And so we give this to you in thankfulness in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Now you may pass the containers as we continue to worship.
Father, we thank you, and we do claim that as, as we take communion, even today, God, I just pray that that was, that was seared in our heart as, as the bread was taken, the juice was, was, as we drank the juice, Lord, that we would leave today, that we would just sear in our hearts that, that it was a sacrifice, God. And I know we do that over and over and over again, and I think that's why you said, every time you do this, remember me, because you knew we were going to need a reminder. So remind us today, Lord, that you saved and that on the cross you took our sins. What a gift. What an amazing God. We give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a seat, you guys. Well, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, there's one. Summer, summer is over. It is officially fall. Okay, there's another one. Um, can't say anything about the Broncos. We know what happened there. And uh, I, I am wearing this not intentionally. We had a tailgate party here today, so I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, I'll be honest. We we love each other, don't we? So, can I be real honest? I asked Pastor Kirk, I said, why is it when the Raiders win, it's gloating, and it's a sin, but when the Broncos win, it's a blessing from the Lord? <laughs> Can you explain that one? If not, it's okay. I'm going to invite the ushers up to receive today's tithing and giving, and if you've never been here on Sunday, our kids are already uh, started, the children, the middle school, the high school, so if there's any age group here that wants to go ahead and take off, you're more than welcome to take off. Uh, they start at the top of the hour at, at 6 o'clock service, and, and, of course, this is our youth group, air, youth time, so you're welcome next week when you come to just drop them off, um, and the kids, will, they'll take care of the kids. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your blessing, Lord, and once again, we do, we give you all glory, God. I pray that you just anoint Pastor Kirk's words here and that he, he speaks to a lot of us. I would, I would pray he speaks to all of us. Uh, that you speak to all of us, Lord, and that the words that you are speaking through him, God, they, uh, they are words that we need to hear. So we bless you. We glorify you in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take peek at the over. What I did appreciate about the Naturally Supernatural Conference was it gave Karen and I practical tools and maybe a simple understanding of the gifts of the Bible and the gifts of what Jesus uh, told us that we could do. For me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a skeptic, to be quite honest with you, and it helped me get beyond the skepticism. It helped me just do the stuff. As simple as it may sound, you, you, you learn how to pray for people. God could really use me through a prayer to heal somebody. We have a conversation with somebody, and then at the end of that conversation, we say, well, I'll pray for you. And then we get in our car, and uh, I don't know that we honestly pray for them the way we should. I think it's made me more conscious about making statements like that. And if I'm going to say, I'm going to pray for you, then I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to make it a point to pray for you specifically. And that might be on the spot a lot more times than... It used to be. Hey guys, Tim Brown here. Here's what's happening at Canyon View. We believe that Jesus Christ committed two ordinances to the church, water baptism and the Lord's Supper. Both are available to all believers. Come and celebrate with us October 2nd during the 6 p.m. service as people make a public profession of their faith through baptism. If you are considering being baptized, please plan on attending the baptism class on Sunday, October 2nd, 4.30. If you have questions, contact Laura here at the church or email laura at gjvineyard.